So, today's presentation is... All right. All right. Now, uh, disclaimer, I uh, really just started playing with this shit like a month ago. So, I'm not an expert. So, if you have any questions, I may or may not be able to answer them. Uh, if I can't answer them, you've got a 50% uh, chance of me just making shit up instead of saying that I don't know. So, just be warned, okay? Um, uh, no, no, I'm just kidding. So, this is R. <laughs> This is my first presentation. <laughs> right, this is R, and um, uh, there you go. Um, why R? I'm glad you asked. All right, the reason uh, we have R is because um, there are some ways to uh, there are some ways to display data that are uh, really really pretty, really good looking, and really involved. But those take a lot of time to set up. All right, they're not very good if you don't really know what you're looking for. Things like D3JS. Anybody use D3? Yeah, yeah. Um, things like that. They're really pretty and they look really good and they're really impressive. But uh, you you really have to know what you want to show people because it takes you three hours to set it up and get it going. You know what I mean? Um, with R, you can just start playing with stuff and you can have you can see how data looks from different angles and different configurations. And uh, even if you don't really know what you're looking for, you can just sort of play around with it until you find something. And then you can explore that angle. So that's why it's called exploratory data analysis. <laughs> right? Instead of display, it's just, if you just get in there, you just want to play with the data and see what you can find, basically. So why is it called R? Huh? Why is it called R? That's a good question. And uh, I don't know that one, I'm sorry. Why well, analysis is missing an L. <laughs> what, Paco? <laughs> Save the questions for after, okay? <laughs> so, back to this. Um, so this is R. Right here. This is basically R Studio. This is um, the R itself is a language. R Studio is a piece of software that's been provided. It makes it a lot easier to play with it. Um, I'm still a beginner, so I'm with this for the time being. Um, is everybody everybody still following? Do you have any questions so far? People are confused. Is this R Studio provided by the people who make the language, or is it a third party? I think it's a third party. It's a Cran, I think, is the, the company, the organization that they made R, and uh, this is a different company. If I say so. Yep. You should explain kind of the applications of R. Applications of R before. Before. Yeah. Correct. Right. Uh, like, let's say, for example, you have. Um, well, let's say you have a, a list of all of the um, the baby names from 2007 to 2012. And you want to find out which baby names are the most popular, and which baby names are, you know, uh, the least popular, and uh, which areas of the country have got uh, the most concentration of X baby name, whatever. And then, you know, you're going to have uh, a ton of data that you've collected to get this first, but you can't do anything with it because it's all, you know, on a CSV. You know, and you can go through and you can like manually take and figure out and add things up. If you want to put an Excel spreadsheet, you can put it there and you can use pivot tables and you can play with that. But you're really limited to what you can do. Um, R is really good because you can just throw the data in and then it's it's in there and then it gives you a, a host of things you can do with it. You know, you can really just play with it. You can spin it around, you know, dribble it. You know, it's it's you really feel like you're you can you can just oh let's open it this way. Okay, good, let's open it this way. Let's look at this way. Good what, thing. What type of data sets does it handle? Um, I've used basically CSV for the most part. I don't know if you use shape files or not. Um, I know a lot of places that you're going to download, they offer a .shape. Um, then looks for, but I assume it probably uses that. Um, CSVs, it uses, it can get Excel to an extent, as long as you don't really like strange or fancy on there. Um, uh, text files, just dot .text files, as long as it's separated. Uh, TSV files, and uh, you will have to do some some munging uh, for most of the data you find. Most of the data I went on, I went on to um, this site, and yep, I went on to these guys. Uh, that data www.data.gov to get the data sets that I found that I was playing with, and most of them are Excel or just text or some strange thing. You have to go in and you've got, okay, I don't need to know which company did that. I need to know strange patterns. All I want is, like, you know, 
the name of the columns and then the columns. That's all I need. So you have to go and get rid of that shit to a stuff to a RSG if you're gonna use it. Um, but you can use it. You can use it, and it's a lot faster uh, if you do that. So just to give you a, a taste. So like this, when you download our studio or download our actually, it comes with um, a data set or a couple data sets built in so you can play with it and learn how to use them, right? So I'll, I'll use one of those to start with. I'll use, I'll bring in uh, MT Cars data set, okay? And that's, see right here? And the values have just popped up and we should be able to take a look at it. Inspect it. No. Oh, that's interesting. I promise. Okay, I fucked up. Let's see. Um, <laughs> uh, hmm. Let's see if it's. Oh, good. It's in there. Okay, excellent. I didn't fuck up. Sorry, guys. So there it is. Okay, great. Okay, so what we got here is we've got just a list of cars, basically. And this is a really simple data set, and it's really clean. Um, and you've got basically uh, a row of rows of cars. You've got their miles per gallon, the number of cylinders, their displacement, the horsepower. I don't know what drag is. The weight, the something per second, and then a bunch of other stuff that I don't really know what it is. And then, so basically, you can go in and you can uh, analyze this data right off the bat without downloading it. Um, so, for example, uh, I just got the names of with this names command. I just got all of the the headings basically. Um, you can get a little more detailed information on it. That you can get basically how everything is structured, and you can get uh, a general sample of what's in it. Um, let's get the row names. All right, you get those. Um, you can get a summary of the data. Actually, you should show you, it's to give you like the minimum, the maximum of a lot of values, uh, the mean, uh, all this stuff. You can see that for like, for example, here for the miles per gallon, it gives you the minimum, minimum, the maximum at the bottom, the mean right here, and all that sort of stuff. So if you're looking for a car that has really good mileage, you can go in and get, you know, probably from a larger data set, and you can just look at all the ones with the right mileage you're looking for, um, that sort of thing. Um, that's a long. All right. Well, let's make a really simple graph. Let me make a quick scatter plot of this, so you can see what it does. We're going to plot the weight per miles per gallon. Name, name, title of the. Uh, This is the X label. Okay, so we just got a scatter plot. So we start over the CSV, and within basically 30 seconds, we've got a plot. And this can be exported into, you know, PNG. We can export it to PDF. You can really with it. If you want to get and make it pretty, you can play with the colors. You can make it look, you know, whatever. And this is just one plot. You know, we we can make um, uh, bar bar graphs, uh, line graphs. We can combine them and have combination graphs. And it's all from like just one command at a time. And that's it. And it's really fast. Um, uh, I've heard that if, if what you're doing in R is too slow, if you're really, really big data set, you can actually drop into C inside of their language. I haven't done that yet, but I, I hear that's one, one good thing about it to make it go faster. Um, there's a scatter. Let's get a, we'll make a, a cluster matrix. All right, so we'll get, uh, basically, we'll find out which cars are the most similar by grouping them. And 
Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> so just bam, right there. So what it's done is gone through all the data and it's clustered them by um, similarity between their attributes. And this is really, it's something that, you know, probably would take you and me a day or two to do. And it doesn't like that. So we know that, even though we don't know exactly why, we know that, you know, the Chrysler Imperial and the Calic Fleetwood and the Lincoln Continental are all fairly similar in their, in their, um, in their attributes. And they're far away, they're quite different from the Mazda RS-04, for example. What's that Toyota Corolla similar to a Porsche? I'm sorry, what? How's the Toyota similar to a Porsche? Well, that's the thing is, it's it's yeah. all decided by the machine, you know, <laughs> and it's it only has to do with the the data that we have here, like the miles per gallon, number of cylinders, and stuff. You have no idea. Um, it has no idea about anything else. Do so, you, yeah. Do you know what these commands do, like outside of our studio? Like these, just, it's the same. It's the same. Yeah. It's the same. So it's also it's just, it's just providing you additional GUI to actually you know, get. Those graphs and so on, but you, yeah. can, you can do command line as well, it's the same command. Yeah, it's the but same thing. And it just outputs like bi binary, like it just outputs something that you save as a file? No, it'll make you a graph. It'll make you a graph. It'll pop up in your screen if you do it in the command line. I can do the same in the command line and you'll get, you'll get this. That's right, you get the same thing. It's the same what, thing. like drawing with end cursors or something? No, 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 it goes. No, the same. X11, you'll open a window and draw the graph. Oh, yeah. okay. That's what it does. This, uh, our yeah, okay. That's what I does. This our studio is it's just pretty rapid for it. Yeah. Okay. This it's you'll get this. Easier. And the good the, the reason I like this is because it lets you sort of see what the data looks like. It gives you this nice preview, which you know would just be onerous in the command line. Um, and a nice way to like get. Oh yeah, no, no, this looks great. I was just yeah. trying to conceptually understand like if you're writing code, what is it actually like returning? Like what values are being returned or stuff like that? But right. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, all right. So, um, so to give you a more interesting example, let's uh, we'll go in and we'll import a data set from a text file, and we've got thank. Look at that, we've got baby names from 2007. <laughs> All right? So, what's that? It's the strip of names from data. Oh, that's coming later. <laughs> oh, I didn't want you guys to see that yet. All right. All right, well, let me play with this. So, all right, so we've got basically this. We've got, um, we've got baby names uh, from 2007, 2012 in New York. All right? And it's just going through, and it's, you know, year, name, county, sex, and the number of kids that were born in that county with that name. That's all it is, okay? And this is like 35,217 35, rows, which is a lot, but R really should have no problem. So we'll just do a quick summary. And really good thing about R is that it's very good at autocomplete, so it's not difficult to work with at all. So let's move this guy up here so you can see better. So we've got, you know, um, the names, these are just the first name, the mins, and the means, and the max. Those are the incidences of the rows, not the names, and not actually reliable data. So this is probably of limited value in this. But you can see the counts, for example. You know, you can see the counts, um, what the average count is, what the maximum count is. You can see there's quite a big difference between the maximum count for one name, for any one name, and the minimum count for any one name. So, um, uh, so let's do the, you know. The first thing that I do, which is find all the Aidens, all right? So we'll go and find a subset um, of baby names, and we'll get the first name. Oops. No, maybe not. Oh, that's why. There we go. Aiden. We've got a ton of Aidens, all right? And then we can go and we can find the other Aidens, and we can find all the Aidens, which aren't a lot, and we can find all of the other Aidens that are spelled a different way. There's a ton, there's a shit ton of Aidens, all right? Um, and then we can find uh, all the baby names, yep, all the baby, we can go by county and find all the baby names that have greater than 100 count in that, in that record. Go ahead. Uh, two questions. Can you do regets to get all the Aidens in one. You can do an or if you want to. Yeah, you can do a logical or if you want. I think I think you can. I think you can do not a regex, but you can do like this. Stupid. 
but uh, it just cloud just blows right off the buffer, so it really isn't. You can't see much that way. If you want to explore it, then what you can do is this: you can um, throw it into a, a, ma a matrix, a data frame is what it's called. Um, a, it's, and you can do that, and then it shows up here. You can see in your environment, and then you know you can go through and you can say you can explore it and just look at this subset. And we've got all the Aiden, 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 Aidens basically in there. And you can look at it that way if you want to. But you know, let's, let's see that. Um, all right, so now we can look at all of the baby names that have a count greater than 100. So they came up in a year in a county more than 100 times. All right, and that's quite a lot. You know, Alexander, Christopher. Sophia, Olivia, Rachel, Joseph, Daniels, all those, all right? Um, we can do the same thing. Say, well, there's a lot, so maybe let's narrow it down and go incidents of more than 200. And we can see this, you know, it's still quite a bunch. You know, we've got Daniels, Kayla, Justin, Sebastian, Jaden, yep, so Jaden. And then we can go and we can do the 250, and then we get a lot of Jadens. And we, <laughs> we get a... There's really a lot of Jadens in New York between 2000. There's a lot of five, six-year-old Jadens running around New York right now. There really are, um, especially in Kings County. Um, uh, a lot of Daniels and Davids, too. Bible names are always really big. Yeah, that's right. Uh, what a style. Um, and then, so now, I know you guys are like, what's, what's the most popular name? So we can do that. This is a little bit, I have to do this from... Not from memory, I can't remember this one, but so we do name ranking, throw it into the air. We can break it in. Count. Yep. And summit. I should do that. Good. So we've just taken, we've summed up. All of the all of the numbers for each baby name, right? So we eliminate all the duplicates, right? And sum them up and put them all into a, a data frame. And now we can uh, order them so that we see. Oops. Okay. Order. And I'm just gonna minus it, and then we order it on count. So that we can see. Where did I mess up? Oh, that's why. Yeah, it's a bit picky. Really? <laughs> did I misspell something? It is a tilde. It's supposed to be a tilde. Because if you go into here, you can see that, basically. Does that minus count mean it's like descending order? Or right. Um, yeah. Can't you just click on the count, like on the column name? What's that? You can just click on the column name to, to reorder it? I'm going to try it. No. I'm going to open some of the Oh, we can do that and look through it. <laughs> but it really doesn't tell us much at this point. If I can just get it worked at work. Hold on a second. <laughs> that worked. What if you the minus? Let's try that. That's a good idea. Oh, it's not found, but it's there. It's supposed to be square bracket. 
Yeah. You have to qualify accounts and accounts, you know what it's a member of? Capital C or? Yep, capital C. I'm sorry guys, this is disappointing. Have you tried turning it off and on again? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Hit it. Percussive maintenance? No? No, I'm sorry guys, I suck. Uh, well, anyway. What's that? You have to tell it where count is coming from, I guess. Name ranking. Right. Yeah, okay. Name ranking has it right here. No. Okay, we'll skip that. Anyway, um, in case anybody was wondering, the most popular was Jaden. It was like number three. It was like 7,000, there's like 7,000 Jadens in New York waiting to pounce on the rest of the United States at this point. So just, you know, get ready. Um, let's try this one then. Let's go right to this. So the next thing we can do is this. If you want to see, for example, um, you want to take this data and cross-check it against the stripper names, the no list of known stripper names, then you can do that. You can say stripper names. And then you can make this into a data frame. Like that. Good. And then we can... What does the C mean? That's how it makes um, a vector. Okay. It's just a little handle. Um, to say that what's inside of this, I like to think it's like it's like a handle on a mug, basically. But I want to say inside this mug is going to be a vector. It's going to be a set of data like that that you're going to use. And we're going to sum. Basically, we can take this list that we in fact that we made of all the known stripper names and subset the baby names against that. In okay, you know what? I'm sorry, guys. Presentation's over. <laughs> it worked. It worked on my own computer. So, um, go ahead. Yeah. No, I had a question. Like, could you use like the thing you did for the cars? The uh, seeing which cars are, are the most similar. You do that on the names, so you get a cluster of the different spellings for the same name. Oh, that's a good idea. You can try that. Uh, it won't be the spelling though, it'll be, you know, compare everything, like the spelling, the, the names and the numbers. Yeah. So, and the county. So it'll be like, it'll go row against row, basically. I'm sorry, guys. It was much more impressive than what I had. Um, but that's basically it. I mean, it's you just basically you really can play with a lot of data really quickly. Stop. Any questions? On the, uh, on the, the new ranking thing I was moving before, this is yeah. for me everyone. Yeah, but I don't suppose the order should be on the outside around the ranking and it just count inside square brackets. Um, count inside square brackets? So yeah. I don't I think, think so. I we can try it. Thing, well, it's not that, is it? We can try it. You mean like what? So yeah, take so so there's just count comma inside the square brackets. Right. And then wrap that whole thing in order. Wrap that whole thing in. Yeah, yeah. So, so take the order function, put it outside name ranking, and then the print. So delete order completely. Yeah. Delete this parentheses around count. Oh, do this. Uh, no. No. Print square brackets around count. All right. So square brackets around count. Square brackets around count. And then put order at the front of name ranking, and then parentheses around name ranking. All right. Maybe that. Yeah. yeah. No. Nope. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Sorry. But you have a general introduction to it. Um, any questions? Is there any kind of like, um, I don't know, I see this, I, I think like Emacs it has like this great like online help system where it tells you what functions are available all the time. And, like, yeah. It has a built-in tutorial. Anything like that in this? Uh, this, this, this box. Mm -hmm. R. We can basically it's just like uh, manuals in the console and the dash functions, and we have explanation for all the functions. Okay. Mm -hmm.
that was with them. So what was the surnames? The, the arrow, right? Uh, surnames? Right there. Yeah. Somebody <coughs> future strippers. Does it have any mm -hmm. type of fun uh, photos? No. Uh, <laughs> uh, so how does it compare to things like uh, Octave? Like what? Like Octave. Octave. Numpy? Don't know. Enjoy it. Numpy? Is it Numpy? Numpy? Do you guys call it Numpy? Oh, Pi. Pi. Yeah. Okay, great. I don't call it Numpy. I'm sorry. It makes me not cool. I just call it by how I. I was calling the the server. What was the one? Like Apache. The other one. Kind of like. Nginx. Yeah. I was calling that Nginx. All like in years, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if someone calls this now, it's in X. Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah. Mm. What about uh, Django, DJ Django? I say Django, but oh, that's DJ Django. DJ Django. <laughs> 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 no, uh, but yeah, so does it have any more statistical, like, or mathematical stuff? Uh, it's got a lot. Yeah. I don't know if it has more than NumPy. Oh, but it's more like a kind of a mass lab yeah, open source right. version. It's yeah. more like mathematics yeah. oriented. This one is more like data exploration. I don't know. But you can do a lot of similar stuff with both, but it's really more to explore data as I was saying in the beginning. Too. Mm -hmm. what, what's like the biggest data set you play with? The biggest data set I play with? Um, probably this one. In 50,000 rows mm -hmm. is the biggest one so far. It can do much bigger. I haven't done a lot with it. I tried doing like 1.8 cube. Yeah. It takes not much time. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Alright. Yeah, sure. Alright. Yep. Uh, so I think it's uh, worth mentioning. Uh, but R can also be used for like a linear curve fitting. Okay. Uh, if you have data sets or price points or if you. Um, I guess if you guys have customer visits to sites and they have mm -hmm. like distributions, uh, you find the distributions, uh, mm -hmm. simple linear formulas, a bit more advanced models with higher dimensions also. I know some of those words. <laughs> <laughs> some. <laughs> Can I just say yeah. that? Go ahead. I'm the obsession speaking. <laughs> <laughs> This, I don't, I, this should I don't totally know. work, right? right. <laughs> and you're just like, oh, not again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got it. You got it? I think so. Or I might fail in front of everybody. Oh. All right, okay. Arrow, okay, cool. Oh. Okay, so. Oh, that would make sense. And that would probably be why your other one didn't work either. What does it attach to do? It, uh, it, it attaches that for sorting. And then if we do this, that works. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's awesome. All right, so yeah, so you're now it's ordered. Great. You're going to do the strip names too, I think. What's that? The strip names should work now as well, I guess. All right, let's try that. No, but it's ordered. Okay. That extender is on this line. And you Oh, it's, it's not the sending, right? It's not, yep. It's alright. Let's try that. There we go. Yep. Michael oh. Matha, Jaden. So, that's it. <laughs> Get ready for the Jadens. And let's try the strippers in now. We'll cross check it against the list of future strippers. 50 years. <laughs> no? Doesn't work? <coughs> you have to touch it. <laughs> you have to touch no, it. I'm going to subset it. No. So, there it is. There we go. And then we get that. So now we have a list, basically, of all the kids that were born between 2007 and 2012 in the New York with super names. <laughs> and how many of each, basically? Are there any dudes now? There are. There's yeah. angels. There's angels. Yeah. There's only angels. Only angels, yeah. Destiny. Destiny. <laughs> I would like to buy one music script. And the first name and the name of the county, I think so. Shouldn't sing one more. Sarah Bond, Tasha Queens, Jane Kings. Engine Monroe. What? 
about the poor babies who got named after cars. <laughs> after what? Cars. Not the cars. Oh, you can find those too. <laughs> no, seriously. If you go into, if you go in and sort in, um, I think that's what Toyota was. Ascending <laughs> order. Hold on a second. Because I found those kids too. Actually, we'll go back here. Um, we'll or, we'll do this, and instead of doing that, we'll just rank it like that. And then we'll get it in a buffer instead of in a variable. And then you can go here and you can go on. You can find the, on the low end the kids that there aren't a lot of kids with those names. Like you have Zoe misspelled. You have Tehila, uh, Tatum. Let's see, that wasn't a good one. Rhea, Rudy, Megan, Maureen, Rhea, Rebecca, Israel. Israel, it's always nice. Jaden, J A D O N. Is real. Is real. Yep. Isis. That was that was that was Isis. Yeah. This is this. This ends in 2012. I don't think there's going to be a lot of Isis's born in 2012. Oh no, they changed that into Isis. Yep. Ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. But, but yeah, like I mean. What the hell is Sipora? Sipora. What the hell is that? I've never heard that name before. <laughs> is it like a Jewish name? The TZ would make it, wait, I think so, wouldn't it? The Tzadi, it's probably a Jewish name. What's that? Michaela. That's Michaela. That's actually a fairly st standard name. That's not. Obviously not. Yeah, well. Cadence? Oh, there's like an insane amount of Chloe's, like spelled K H. You can do the, like, from the, you know, Khloe Kardashian, since that TV show went on, like, the number of Chloe's spelled K-H-L-O-E went up. You can do the same thing that we did when you search for the Aidens. You can go in here and we can find... There we go. Can you do sub, um, substrings? Substrings? Yeah. Uh, like, you're starts with K-H. There's, like, a ton of them. Oh, that's a good idea. I don't know how to do that. I don't know, maybe you can put a star instead of uh, Alright, let's try that. Yeah. Another one. Oh, that's a good idea. Right, let's try that. Yeah. Like that? Inside, inside, like this? Uh, inside the quotes. That or inside the quotes, so okay, H percent. Oh, okay. You mean like this? Yeah, maybe. Okay. No, no, no. nothing. Like? It was valid, though. Like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's you all. Maybe. Do you mean like with your uh, what's the percent? What's like the beginning? Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> no. No. Try. At the beginning of the stream, on the very clever expression. Like this? Like that? Is, it, is that the code the carrot? <laughs> What's a carrot to call? Is a grep yeah, function yeah. carrot? Yeah. Why don't I tell you what? We'll just stop here, <laughs> and I'll look it up, and we can come back later and play with it while we're drinking. How's that? We'll try and figure out how to do how to do how to do links. But yeah, it's, I mean, it's I spent like literally an hour and a half just doing this. Get ready because I, I was having, I forgot where I was for an hour. I was like, wow, this is awesome. Like, Talia? What the hell? You know, like that. It's just time goes. It's really fun. I mean, I found all sorts of data sets on uh, this site, on data.gov. There's a bunch of other sites, but there's like anything in the United States is in here. Um, there's a bunch of other ones you can go to. Um, and it's just fun, really. Oh, uh, shameless plug, uh, my company is looking for data people. If you, if you are interested in, uh, and we're looking for a job, and I want to do data analysis, uh, give me an email, and I'll set you up. Okay? Great, thanks.